Good morning, church. Hopefully it'll be cooler than Wednesday night this <laughs> yeah. morning. Um, Happy a bonus. You're very welcome this morning. It's great to see you all. Um, I'd also like to welcome everybody that's joining us online this morning. Um, I'm Vicky. I'm our minister in training here. Um, and this is Rebecca. I'm Rebecca and I lead our children, youth and families ministry. So, Rebecca, tell us what's been happening. So, um, we've actually got a lot of stuff coming up, um, but there's so much going on, and we've got such a full service this morning that we'll do a proper highlight on each thing next week. But just so that on your radar, in the next few weeks, we're going to be asking for people to help with our family activity morning, which is at the end of July, our one community youth event over at Purdiswell Youth Centre, and we've also got a family film night planned for the end of the summer holidays. So I won't go into all of that now because it will take a few minutes but just have those on your radar um, and maybe look out for some emails from me in the next couple of weeks um, asking for some very willing volunteers that would be super sounds really exciting yeah. um, so from me I would like to um, just let everybody know that um, the Open Doors Prayer Diary for July and August has come out um, and they are available downstairs on the rack. Um, if you're not sure where to find them, please do um, speak to Barry, who's on our welcome team this morning. Um, that's that. And... Um, yeah, so obviously after the service, you'll be aware that we have our fellowship bring and share lunch. Um, so we're going to go downstairs after the service and have coffee in the co uh, coffee shop and the lobby to start off with. This then gives the team time to set everything up. But also it means that those that are helping put chairs away at the end of the service, um, those that are tying up anything, any loose ends up here, um, will get to come down and enjoy food with all of us and we can do it together. So, um, so yeah, I will <laughs> say grace before we head downstairs. So you'll, that will be your sign. <laughs> Um, we had a great church uh, meeting, um, annual church meeting on Wednesday, and um, we had lots this morning to give thanks for. Um, um, and, oh, just a last-minute um, request. Um, as you're aware, I've been talking about Healed for Life virtual encounter, which is happening next weekend. Um, they have extended the deadline to tomorrow, so if there is anyone that is still interested in joining this course, um, please do... Um, speak to Lydia and um, she's also needs a little bit of help with catering so anybody that feels um, that they could help with that on the Friday or the Saturday or both um, please do speak to Lydia after the service thank you right let's focus on God now let's still our hearts and let our gaze turn to Jesus Lord we thank you we thank you that um, we have a jam-packed service, and that's because of all the amazing things that you're doing, Lord. We thank you for all the children, for the, for the jingling of bells mm. and the chitter-chatter, Lord. We thank you and praise you for that. Mm. And Lord, we just lift this, this service up to you, our offering, Lord. May it be a fragrant, pleasing offering to you. Mm as we worship you mm. in spirit and in truth. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, can I, sorry, Vicky. Yes, Just you can. if you've got children with you this morning, just things are a little bit different. So just to fill you in so you know what we're doing. Youth, you're stopping in all morning today so you can get comfy, you don't have to move. Um, if you've got children, we're going to stop in until we've done our Thanksgiving review bit because we want you, you're part of that, you'll see yourself in pictures, we want you to be included in that bit and then we'll head out afterwards. For that section, you've got some things on these tables down at the front. So if you want to come down um, and do those and you can think of the things that you're really thankful for from over for the last year as well. Amazing. Let's worship. Let's worship indeed. Let's stand up for able. Let's worship. Let's sing. Give thanks to the Lord.
have so much to be thankful for. We give thanks to you this morning. Well, we're going to sing a song now that we, we played at Unite a few uh, weeks ago, and the youth absolutely love it. And it's called I Thank God. And so it kind of seemed fitting that we did it this morning. If you don't know it, um, I hope and I pray that you can take it in easily. Um, I'm sure you've heard it before. It's, it's big at the moment. So let's sing. Let's sing I Thank God. I just got a bit carried away then. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> I have the absolute delight in bringing you um, our review of the year. I'm just going to pop that down there a second. I'm sure you'll agree that um, this last year has been a significant one um, for St. Peter's Baptist Church. It's been a year of building up and branching out. Building up, we've seen our fellowship grow closer, working together to build a strong foundation in which to welcome and invite others. 
Going deeper has been a key phrase that God impressed on a number of people's hearts at one of our prayer days. And going deeper with God has continued to be at the fore of our ministry. Therefore, by going deeper, we are making sure that we have a solid foundation on which to build. We are called to build up the body of Christ through our gifts and service. And we're seeing this at St. Peter's. The foundations of love have been laid with Christ as the chief cornerstone. And we are watching as brick by brick, members are growing in confidence and are encouraged to discover and use their gifts, as Paul instructs, to build up the church. This is a work in progress, a journey. We're also seeing growth of numbers in our church fellowship, of people seeking, of people discovering, and of people coming back to faith. And we're urged in 1 Peter 2 verse 5, like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ Jesus. Branching out, we are seeing our existing ministries grow. The numbers attending Frontline and Tuesday at 2 are increasing. There is a need for new small groups. The care home ministry is growing with another home added to those being visited. The bereavement journey has been a welcome addition and is in high demand with the recent course full. We are seeing new ideas come to life, like Talking Point, um, with missional communities reaching out through groups like Flourish and Lightbox, Eden Story, Bumps and Babies, Family Activity Events, Alpha, places where we can invite others along so that they too can encounter Christ. We've also had a few people share at retreat and prayer days of pictures they believe God has given them of the church building without walls. This speaks into the idea of branching out. We are taking time to listen, to discern and weigh up what we should pick up and what we should lay down. Let's keep our eyes on God, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, and keep listening and following his voice, his lead. So Andy Browning, our minister, has now completed his second full year in the role. And he went on sabbatical at the end of May after postponing it in 2020. And he will return in September. And if you get a chance, please do watch his vlogs on YouTube. Um, They're really, really encouraging. Um, Our vision, loving, releasing and inviting. We had some valuable discussion time at the April Church members meeting about the vision. And the feedback was that the vision is developing well. There's a real sense of significant change over the past year of growth, development, connections between people, more opportunities to share. Loving, we are a very loving church and have become a more cohesive family. There's more of a family feel, I'm sure you'll agree. Releasing, we're seeing more people of all ages being released to use their gifts. You only had to look at the stage this morning um, to see Jensen um, playing the bass, the second time ever that he's played the bass. Um, And it's so great to see people being released um, to to try out new gifts. This is a work in progress and we will be looking into resources and ways to support people in identifying their gifts and to provide safe places for people to try out these gifts. Inviting. We are seeing more and more people being invited to the building, whether that's to Alpha, to services, to the coffee shop or to one of our various groups. We recognise that inviting can be difficult for some, that when we have specific events, it's easier, like our family activity sessions. The St. Peter's Festival was a great example of this, where we were able to connect with local people and invite them to come, whether to the coffee shop or to one of the groups. It's encouraging to see confidence growing in this area of inviting, and we can see the fruits from this growing confidence. As more people come to know Jesus, I believe we will continue to develop and grow in this area. And I'm excited to see 
how this vision continues to develop over the coming year. Our leadership team has been thriving, united and committed. Tim Parker has continued as our senior church leader. Um, Lisa Adams and Tim Goodhall have stepped down from the leadership team. Um, and we had an election on Wednesday night. Um, and um, I'm pleased to announce that um, Alison Boardman, Anne Harwood, Kim Stansfield and Tim Parker will be um, our, in our leadership team again for a second term and um, Phil Lloyd will be joining us as our new leader and we will um, um, speak more about that um, after this, uh, um, later on in the service. Um, staff team, Isaac Porter has joined the team and he's settling in well. Um, Al Warner has indicated that she is leaving her role as ministerial team leader um, and we've extended the application deadline now to the 22nd of July um, with interviews taking place on the 29th of July. Um, and also we had a wonderful staff retreat day um, which really helped build team and um, we had a chance to slow down and listen to God um, and this is just such an important thing to do to slow down services we've had attendance gradually growing in the morning service and we've had some special services including our wonderful baptismal Easter service and where God powerfully moved um, in Soul Food, we've seen continued growth and development over the last year, and it's been a place where we've celebrated baptism, shared testimony, and we've given space for members to exercise potential gifts. We've had a number of preaching series. Um, we've had um, the Book of Isaiah. Um, we've had Abundant Blessings, Spiritual Disciplines, Galatians, Armed for Battle, which is our current series. Um, and we've had five practices of discipleship, James, Ruth, and we're currently looking at what's in a name, the names of God in soul food. We've also enjoyed visiting speakers, um, Steve Thompson and Francis McAndawiri. We've had a number of baptisms, um, Laura Fairman, Angie Andrews, Terry Andrews, and Am Emma Regette. And we've seen a number of people finding faith and making a commitment to God for the first time. We've continued our membership review and we've seen 22 new members. So we currently have 202 members um, with 10 that have left, transferred, or been removed from our list. We've also had dedications. Um, we've had the dedication of Benji Fairman, who sat over there, um, and Olivia Regett. Um, they were That was just such a lovely time of fellowship that we enjoyed um, food afterwards as well. We've had a number of funerals of members, former members and those close to our family heart. And um, I'd like to give thanks for the lives of Brian Underwood, Anne Brown, Helen Millwood... Dave Morton, Sheila Roberts, Andy Horn, Ian Garrard, Becky Davidge, and Jan Miles. Please hold their families in your prayers. Christmas 2023 was a great time with a theme, eternal hope, generation to generation. Um, and our particular highlights were the craft day, the festive feast, home for good appeal, um, the wreath making, the Christingle CYF event, soul food, carol service, um, our reflective service, which was a bit quieter, our Christmas Eve service, our Christmas Day service, and New Year's Eve All Age Cafe Church service. So it, you can see how busy we have been as a church, but that Jesus is at the center of all of that. Our Alpha courses continue to be fruitful and vibrant, led by myself and Kim Stansfield. And we've had um, Lisa Adams join for our um, first course of the year. And then um, this second course that we've finished, um, we had Claire Boniface and Terry Andrews um, jump on board onto the team. Um, and we're looking forward to um, moving forwards in September with our next course. Tools and materials and resources have really increased in quality. Um, we're on our fourth edition of the Welcome Booklet. Um, the website and the social media content has continued to improve, which means that more people are reached. 
Easter events included an Easter activity morning for families, Lent reflection daily videos, Holy Week evening reflections, the wonderful Passion Play in Cathedral Square on Good Friday, and an Easter Sunday all-age service with Emma Regett's baptism. Other activities have been that we've sent a team to Fresh Streams in January 2024. Um, Talking Point began in October 2023. Um, We had a preaching course late in 2023, and I'd like to thank Paul Campion for leading this. Tim Parker has been chairing our governance team, and they've made good progress on our CIO status, and other areas of governance have moved forward. In April 2024, we sent a team to Malawi. Um, and we received a proposal for a future partnership with Hope Missions Ministries um, at our church meeting on Wednesday, and that has been approved. Um, So you will hear more about that in good time. Missional communities. So St. Peter's Estate Missional Community, we've got a strong huddle. Um, Anne Nichols has taken on the role of deputy with me leading. Um, We have Tim Breed, uh, Simon Boniface, Matt Davis, George Hammonds, Brenda Morris Casey and Pete Wood all serving in the huddle. Um, And as I've already said, it was great to be a part of the St. Peter's Festival. Um, We got to have so many great conversations with people and um, were able to invite them along to groups and to the coffee shop. Pear Tree Field Estate, which is the new estate missional community, Um, they've started moving forward with Kim leading a prayer walk around the estate on the 16th of June. And if you want any more information, please do go and speak to Kim about his missional community. Eden Coffee Shop is seeing increasing fruit with new groups starting, an abundance of conversation and prayer with people, answers to prayer, relationships deepening with regular users and lots of new people coming in to use this space. In CYF, as I've said, we've seen Isaac Porter join the team, I'm not sure where he is this morning, Um, alongside Rebecca Mogg. Eden Story and Bumps and Babies continue to bring in new people and relationships with regulars are deepening. CYF have been able to launch Lightbox this year, which has been a great draw for the youth in our area. As you know, I'm on, I've just completed my first year as minister in training and um, I've stepped up um, whilst Andy is away on sabbatical um, for three months. Um, so that's been really exciting, a little bit nerve wracking. Um, and our internship has seen Phil Lloyd growing, um, especially in his pastoral gifting. And I'm sure you'll agree he's been a valuable addition to our team this year. Um, And as his term comes to an end in July, um, we wait to see if Hannah Kent will be able to join us as an intern in September. Um, Eco Church, uh, Simon Roper continues to lead Eco Church, and I am pleased to say that in March this year, we have now achieved the A. Rocha UK Silver Award status, which is great news. Eden Coffee Shop has had a good year. There's been lots of new customers, many regulars. There's been a deepening of relationships with the focus on ministry. Lydia has led really well and created an environment that is thriving. There have been increased opportunities for adults with additional needs to gain experience and training in the kitchen and with customers. And our lovely Oliver has received a long service award for his volunteering, having been working in the coffee shop every Wednesday for 15 years. So, yeah, amazing. So if you're ever free on a Wednesday, pop in and come and meet Oliver. If you haven't met him, he's a great guy. There's also been lots of connections, conversations, inviting people to meet with Jesus and healing. And in addition to that, there have been other ministries in the coffee shop, such as Flourish, Monday Mid-Morning Mingle, Craft and Chatter, Eden Care Clinics. And these have all been well attended and fruitful. There's a number of other great things. Um, And as I read this out, I'm going to invite Rebecca up to come and share about CYF. We've got small groups, prayer ministry, including dedicated prayer days, care home ministry, pastoral care team, working with mission partners, Cafe Salah, Tuesday at 2, Healed for Life, um, blogs, bookings, ministry. 
And we've got other operational activities that go on, including welcome team, finance, admin, tech team, social media updates, photography and videography, catering, including the coffee team. And there are lots of behind the scenes activities that often don't get a mention, but are vital to the life of the church, such as cleaning, moving chairs, gardening, flowers, <laughs> leaflet delivery, recycling, food bank collection, practical pastoral care, such as meals, transport, DIY. Um, I'd like us to give thanks for all those that serve in varying ways. So if we can give everybody a round of applause, please. And I'm going to hand over to Rebecca. Thank you. I don't know why Andy needed some time off, do you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to talk for too long, um, because I could, if you let me. Um, so we're going to keep this short. Um, so on the screen behind you in a second, you'll see a list of all the different um, CYF ministries that happen or have happened over the last 12 months. Um, children's groups have stayed very similar this year. It's been a year of just embedding what we already do. Um, but there's been quite a lot of change in our youth ministries, um, largely due to the fact that we've welcomed Isaac to our team. Um, and Isaac has, you'll have seen what Isaac's been doing, he's been so busy um, starting new things, um, building relationships between our young people, getting involved in wider city um, youth work as well. Um, and for me, it's just been a joy to just see the stuff that we've dreamed about for years um, really happening and thriving. So we've started Lightbox on Monday evenings, which is for our young people in our community. We have started Focus on Fridays, which is our youth house group. We're really involved in Unite, which is our citywide youth gathering every term-ish. Um, <clears throat> Isaac's part of a team who run um, RISE, which is a group for 16 to 18-year-olds from all the churches across Worcester, and they come together and they study and they worship together. Um, that's a really new thing. It's going really well. We thought there might be five or six young people, and I think the first week there was 20 or something ridiculous. Um, so that's amazing. Uh, and they're actually meeting in a house at the moment, um, and the house is not big enough. Um, so we've got a problem to solve there, but what an amazing problem. Um, so there's lots of new things that have started in youth work and it's just been a joy to see our young people just really uh, go deeper in their faith, go deeper in their relationships with each other. Um, if you were at Soul Food last Sunday, they did the most incredible job um, leading and it's just a joy to see it. Um, Everything else in our kids' work is as usual, I think. Um, we have lots of different things going on, and I thought the most important thing to capture, to share today, was the impact that some of these things are having. Because I could stand here and talk about each ministry for hours, but we do not have time for that. So I thought I would share with you some of the things that some of our families have said. Um, and on the screen behind me in a second, you'll see some of the pictures of the people who've said some of these things. Um, so on the next screen, I think, next one, let's have a look, let's see what their faces are like. Might here we go, okay, this one here. So in um, the bottom picture there, this is um, Sarah and her lovely family. Sarah has just had another baby after having twins less than a year ago. Um, so they've got a crazy busy life, but this is what she said. I've changed Theo's preschool day so that he can carry on coming to Eden's story. Everyone is so welcoming, thoughtful and fun. Each week there's a different theme to help to teach the children the, different, the meanings of different parts of the Bible. Rebecca and Phil have really helped our family for the second time by providing meals when we've had our babies and we're so thankful for this. Sarah um, offered to do my laundry for me when I got back of holiday when she was about three days away from giving birth to her baby um, but it's just so beautiful isn't it isn't that what church is um, that we just do life alongside each other and if we get a chance to share Jesus along the way then that's just an absolute privilege um, and this family are just a beautiful example of how we've been able to do that um, another another one lady in the top picture, she comes along to bump some babies with her NCT group, said, I love the theme days in the holiday because I can bring my niece along as well. She loves the songs. Thank you for providing such an amazing safe space for people. 
We asked some of our kids in Lightbox why, why they came to Lightbox and why they enjoyed it. And here's some of the things that they said. It's really fun and enjoyable. Thank you. The Lightbox team are great. I like coming because it's fun. I love it. It brings me happiness. Every one of the adults is friendly and good at listening. And it's really fun. That good at listening thing, I don't think we can underestimate that because our young people don't have that really um, unless they choose to opt into that in a school provision. So for us to be able to provide a space where they can talk to somebody is so important. And then the final few quotes here are from one of our school groups. We've got a really lovely relationship with Whittington School. We had year two in a couple of weeks ago, and here's some of the things that they said. This is so lovely. It might be my favorite day of school ever. I'm owning that one. Um, I can't wait to spend time in the peaceful room. We always set up a space where they can listen to God and just take some time to be peaceful and quiet. And um, we come here to learn about Jesus, and it's really special. So all the things that we're doing... It, there's so much going on and it's hard work and there's an incredible team of volunteers that make everything happen. But through everything that we do, we see these beautiful glimpses of Jesus and we have these incredible conversations that we wouldn't be able to have if we didn't have these ministries going on. And all the time, we're thinking about, is this still where God wants us? Some of you will have noticed that we've merged Bumps and Babies and Eden's story recently because we believe that Bumps and Babies was there for a season and post-COVID, there was such a gap of support for new mums so we wanted to provide something there but the community has kind of caught up now and lots of that provision is back in place so we've done some things for a season and we're always checking in is this still where God wants us to be um, but all these things that are happening are just an absolute joy to be involved in and a massive thank you to everybody who helps make those happen because we couldn't do it without you thank you Matt good morning everyone most of you all know me, but just in case you don't, I'm Matt. I don't just play the guitar and sing on Sundays, although there's a lot of what I do. Uh, but I also lead the worship and the front lines or young adult ministry uh, within the church. And so worship-wise, um, it's very much a Sunday morning and evening kind of deal. We do... Uh, we practice a lot, um, but we also practice within the week as well. And so we've been really coming forward, I think, personally, in... Uh, growing as a band, you know, being able to play together and be a little bit less distracting in the morning sometimes, um, and just being able to let the Holy Spirit take charge more, um, which I'd love to see. And we've uh, been so we have practices every other of uh, every other week, um, which again are not just open to the band, but if you would like to come along, uh, let me know, because it's the best place to get to know other musicians and and learn the songs and and have some fun along the way. Uh, we've had people come along uh, growing and developing their skills. We've had new worship leaders this year. Uh, we've had a vocal coaching session, uh, which was different and awesome and really fun. And again, not just for worship team, but for those who just are interested in singing. And there's lots of opportunities to get involved like that throughout the year. Uh, we've introduced some new songs, uh, as we did this morning already, but also trying to keep the balance right of doing traditional songs because there's a lot of power in, in the traditional, in the hymns and in the, and the old and the new. So we're trying to keep that balance well. And uh, if that's working, great. If it's not, come and talk to me afterwards and we can try and make that work better. But um, we've uh, also been developing the tech loads as well, just trying to make the services a little bit more seamless, teaching people how to, to do different things and let people have Sundays off, which I love to see. We also have the Frontline Ministry, um, which I know it can be a bit confusing. Let me explain. So when we say at the end of the service, as you lead us out onto our front lines, this is a different front line. Sorry for the confusion. Um, but I believe when we started this um, ministry a few years ago, um, that it was our job as the young adults to kind of set the standard to be on the front line and hopefully inspire others. And I think we're really growing into that, um, that name that we have. We've been growing in number, we've uh, grown in relationships, uh, we've done some wacky socials, uh, I'll give you a couple, of, a couple of our examples, we did a taskmaster night, a deal, on, deal or no deal, escape room church, uh, we did, <laughs> we did barbe uh, had a barbecue together, and this time-ish last year we went camping together, the same place that we're going to go for our church weekend away. Um, we also, we don't just do silly stuff and fun stuff, we also go really deep into the Bible and we've been looking at uh, the Chosen series recently. Does anyone know what the Chosen is, show of hands? It's a great series, isn't it? And I love the way they, um, 
they highlight the disciples um, as we are them in modern day. You know, we are God's chosen people, and um, just it helps inspire us to to learn what we, how we need to live, and what we need to change. So the conversations that have come from being inspired by watching that show is is fantastic. I absolutely love it. And we've also started a book study um, this year, which has been really interesting. The guys have been looking about how to become manly men, uh, not in the world's view, but in God's view. And the women have been, I always get this wrong, a girl defined. Thank you. I've been so blessed as well. I mean, she's going to not like me for saying this, but to have Eleanor taking a charge, leading the girl side of, of the front line, um, it's been really great. And mentorship is something that we've also started this year, um, which has been really encouraging, really fruitful, uh, but also just very, I've let them get on with it. Um, and people get to, de- you know, decide what they want to talk about. And it's not been too, uh, let's say, designed um, by me. And I'd love to, to hear the stories of, oh, I met up with my mentor this weekend. So, yeah, I'm going to stop rambling. If you are a young adult, 18 plus, um, I guess we're all, yeah. It's, there's a certain range, but I, w- I won't say the top range because <laughs> I'll embarrass someone. Um, but if you consider yourself a young adult and you want to get to know our, our awesome group, do come and chat to me after the service. Wow. <laughs> <sighs> Just makes me think of one of Andy's reflections about p- what we pick up and what we put down. <laughs> um, and we're doing a lot as a church. And there's an excitement amongst the fellowship of all that God is doing. And that, and that is really good. Um, yet God reminds us to be on our guard against the schemes of the evil one. To put on the full armor of God. To put on Jesus. It's only in his strength that we can persevere and overcome. And we ought to remain humble and keep our eyes on him. So let's just give this to God. And I'm going to, at the same time, I'm going to pray for the children as they leave for their groups so that they can burn some energy. (laughs) Lord, thank you. And we thank you and praise you, Heavenly Father, for all that you've done in this place and with your people this past year. We look ahead with excitement to all that you are going to do. We thank you for the privilege of being part of your plan. And we pray your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, as our lovely children leave to go to their children's ministry groups, Lord, I pray that you would be with them, that you would speak into their hearts, that they would be so aware of your presence in their lives and of your guardianship, Lord, and that um, you would enable the leaders to lead well. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to invite Tim Parker and um, the leadership team, the existing one and those um, that are leaving. Um, That would be great. I thought there's definitely a mic here somewhere. (laughs) So um, in this slot, um, we pray for our incoming leaders and our outgoing leaders, and um, we thank God for them. And um, then we make some promises um, for the coming year. So um, I'm just going to kick us off, and uh, yeah, and, and we'll pray. So let's pray. Um, Lord, thank you. Thank you for this team. Thank you that they um, have a heart to serve you, Lord, to hear what you have to say and to be led by you. And Lord, I thank you. I thank you for all those that are standing, that have been re-elected, Lord, into the leadership team. And I also lift up Phil to you, Phil Lloyd, who is our newest member, um, our newest leader. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless each one, that you would Um, Give us the opportunity to just pause and listen to what you're saying to us. That we will have wisdom and discernment to lead the church well, Lord. Um, And I also want to thank you, Lord, for Lisa and for Tim and for all that they have brought to our leadership team and to our church. For their wisdom, for their discernment and for their willingness to serve. And Lord, I just pray that you would bless them both. And... uh, 
yeah, lead them into what you have next for them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, Lord, we uh, thank you uh, that your spirit has been so present um, among us when we have met as a leadership team. And uh, it is humbling uh, the effect that that has had. And we thank you uh, that uh, it has enabled us to work together well, enabled us to uh, listen carefully to your leading, and we thank you for the results of that. Yeah, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Father in heaven, uh, we all thank you <coughs> for the privilege of serving this fellowship and this community the communities around. <coughs> Father, we pray that you continue to flood us with your wisdom and your compassion to frame our knowledge and our gifts with your guidance in everything we do, Father. Help us to continue to persist, to push hard to follow you in whichever direction your Holy Spirit leads us. Help us, Father, to put behind those things that we hold as dear and to seek your, your steps that lead us out. Give us courage, Father, we pray. Amen. Father, I just want to pray for Phil as he steps into a, a fresh new role, uh, as his internship has come to an end, which has been a blessing to him and a blessing to us as a church. Father, I pray that you will uh, help him to grow in wisdom and discernment and experience as he serves uh, alongside the other leaders of this church. Father, he is a blessing to the church, and we pray that you will bless him in Jesus' name. Amen. going to hand over to Tim. Uh, yes, thank you, Vicky. Um, yes, um, I've mentioned a little bit about how we've operated as a team when I was praying, but um, after we've been together for a short while, um, Tim observed how we were acting as a team and uh, brought to us um, some verses from the second chapter of Philippians. Yeah. And uh, said, so this, this is us, this is how we're working, and, and we're so captured by that, really, and so committed to continue to work like that, that um, we, we thought we ought to commit formally um, to do that, and uh, that's what we're going to do now. Um, so if we can have the slides that um, show the words that I'm supposed to be saying, that would be really good. Do we have them? That's right, yes, sorry. I should... Uh, focus on the screen a little more. Yes, so um, I'm going to I'm going to upset Al at the moment who's operating the camera. I'm going to go to one side so that I can look at all the team together. And um, I will say uh, some words and then together we will say we do. Do we believe that we have been called by God to work together humbly and willingly in serving this church and community. We, we do. Do we promise to honor and respect one another, do nothing from vain conceit, but hum in humility regarding others as better than ourselves? And do we promise to work with the members of this church in its calling to seek the kingdom of God? We, we do. do. Thank you. Thank you. Please do take a seat. Thanks, Tim. I'd like to invite um, Hannah Kent up, um, who is off 
um, serving. Um, so I just want to ask you a quick question so that everybody knows what you're doing. If you can give us a brief outline of your busy summer, please. <laughs> Um, so I'm actually heading out to France tomorrow to go and serve on the team at um, the Spring Harvest Holidays campsite in France called Le Pas Opton. So I'm there for three weeks to start with serving on Life Kids, which is the Nought to Freeze. And then there's other stuff running in the afternoon that I'm helping with and, you know, just generally getting involved in serving. And then I'm actually away in Norway for two weeks with scouts on a trip which will hopefully be better organised than South Korea. Um, <laughs> But we'll wait and see. <laughs> and then as soon as that's finished, I go straight back to France to serve for another four weeks in the coffee shop. So, yeah, looking forward to seeing what's go what God's going to do whilst I'm out there. And waiting with bated breath to receive your results, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah, Hannah's just finished her A-levels. So um, Matt and I are going to pray for you um, as you go and serve. <laughs> yes. Lord, thank you for Hannah. Thank you for her heart for you. Thank you that she has um, a clear evangelistic gift, Lord, and a, and a gift in with working with children and young people. And Lord, I pray that you would bless her as she goes away, Lord, to serve, that you would give her all that she needs, Lord, to meet the demands of each day. And I pray that this trip to Norway um, will be a time of encouragement and of rest and of peace, um, but also of equipping Lord, and um, I pray that she'll have opportunities to share her faith while she's there too. And Lord, I just pray for a fresh infilling of your Holy Spirit. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit afresh upon her right now, Lord. Fill her up till she's overflowing. And Lord, help her to keep her eyes on you. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, Lord, thank you for Hannah. Thank you for her willingness to go. So many young people now are finishing their A-levels, Lord. They're looking forward to the next step and what it means for them. Hannah's decided to put that down and see what it means for you to step out, to be filled with your spirit, and to do your work. Lord, be with her as she goes. Fill her with your spirit. Be guided by you and keep her safe, Lord, as she steps away from her family but into your wider, your wider church family, Lord. Equip her, keep her safe, and fill her, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Still me. Um, so I'm going to lead prayers today. Um, and I just want to thank God as well before I start for actually guiding these prayers and guiding them in a way that I didn't think that we were going to be going, because many things have already been said this morning. Um, and I don't want to repeat everything that's gone before, but there'll be some of that. But anyway, here we go. So shall we pray? Dear Lord, Father in heaven, on this Thanksgiving Sunday, we pray that we can be people who are thankful, recognizing your hands on us and the works that you do in each of our lives. We pray that your message about Christ in all its richness will fill our lives. Help us to sing songs and hymns to give praise to you with thankful hearts, always giving thanks to you, our Father. Help us to do this, Lord, to be thankful in all circumstances. For this is your will for all who belong to Jesus Christ. And Lord, I thank you for choosing us. I thank you for choosing me. Broken. Sinful. Separated from your love and the life you wanted me to live. I thank you for saying, come here. I love you. All is forgiven. Come under my wings. Live your life with me as your guide and your companion, as your father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are here, that you love us, that you saved each one of us individually. Thank you that you give us our salvation through your son. Thank you, Lord. 
And I want to now thank you, Lord, for each member of this church family, for each person, young or old, that calls St. Peter's home. Thank you, Lord, for all they bring to this church, for the gifts they offer, for the way they serve. Thank you for this family. Thank you for the unity here. Thank you for the peace and the love that expressed here and is shone out into the community, Lord. Thank you for the support that is offered, for the help practically and prayerfully. All that help that is given, Lord, thank you. Thank you for this church's desire to walk closely with you, to know you more deeply, to be Christ-centered in everything we do. Thank you for our ministers, Lord. Thank you that you fill them with love and passion. Thank you that they have a vision for this church, Lord, a vision driven by you. To release, to invite others to meet with you. And thank you for our preaching team, Lord. For the tech team, for those on welcome, for those who serve coffee, for those who move chairs, clean, run our youth groups, provide pastoral support. Thank you that there are so many willing to serve. And thank you specifically for our young people, Lord. Thank you for the growth that we see in them. Thank you for the willingness to serve you. Thank you for their willing desire to invite others to meet with you and attend church events. May we learn from them, from their openness and their willingness to share your good news. Thank you, Lord. And lastly, Lord, I'd like to thank you that we live in a democracy, that we live in a democracy where we are not dictated to, but can actively contribute in a way in which our country is run. I pray this week, Lord, for our election. I pray that the process is fair and just, and pray that the outcome leads to a leader and a government that is selected by you. And again, Lord, I want to thank you. Thank you that you love me and each of us here. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Shall we stand in parade with us? Let's sing to our King of Kings. Oh,
please do take a seat. Um, God is good all the time. And you say, all the time? Fabulous, sorry. <laughs> it's very cheesy, but it is so true. It is the truth, and we need to be reminded of that truth. Um, I'd like to invite Alan um, to join us. Um, he has a word for us today um, from the Lord, and, uh, and he is going to speak to us about thankfulness. So I'm just going to pray for you. Thank you. Lord, thank you for Alan. Thank you for the gifts that you have given him and for the blessing that he is, both to um, his family and to this church family, Lord. I pray that you would um, yeah, bless him now, Lord. Fill him afresh with your Holy Spirit. And Lord, I pray that you would give us ears to hear, hearts open, Lord, um, that we would hear what you have for us this morning and that we would leave this place changed more into your likeness in jesus name amen, amen. Thank you. well thank you so much uh, vicky and thank you to to you all really um it's been a time of uh, reflection and rejoicing really and uh, it's just been so good to uh, be reminded of the good things that God has been doing amongst us in the year that's passed. You know, there's an old question that preachers like to try on their congregations from time to time, and it's this. If you were arrested and charged with being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? Wonder how I would be judged in court if that were to happen. Well, the number of, uh, of things that should be evident in the lives of Christians, I'm just going to focus today on one particular line of evidence, one which should be typical of us all, and that is an attitude, a spirit of thankfulness. We live in a society um, which has so much in material terms. And what do we find? Most of the time, we complain about what we don't have rather than give thanks for what we do have. It's easy for us, even as Christians, to be dragged into that kind of mold if we're not careful. Australians used to describe British people, British immigrants, as whinging palms. Have you heard that one? Not nice to be called a whinging palm, is it? I wondered wherever the phrase came from. It's actually an abbreviation of whinging pomegranates. So what's that got to do with anything? Well, the way Australians speak... Whinging immigrants equals whinging pomegranates. They get it. It sort of works, really. That's how they came with the, with the expression. So the weather was too hot. The lager was too cold. There are far too many flies for my liking. And then there's the cricket. <laughs> They're always beating us. Well, I really hope that as a nation we're not still uh, seen, even by Australians, as, or particularly by Australians, as whinging palms, or a nation of whingers. So as Christians, we shouldn't be noted for our moaning and groaning. We should be, of all people, characterized by our thankfulness, and that's very much our theme for this day. I'm going to read you two short passages from the book of Colossians where the theme of thanksgiving actually appears um, several times in just uh, four short, short chapters. So Colossians chapter 2 and verses 6 and 7 say this, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and 
overflowing with thankfulness. And then just over the page in chapter 3 and verse 15, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Well, Paul's readers had made Jesus Lord of their lives. And he's setting out for them how they should be living. They should be living very much in Christ, rooted in him, built up in him, uh, strengthened in the faith, and surrounding it all, overflowing with thankfulness. I think we have a picture there of a plant. I don't know if you can see the roots. Yes, you can see the roots. They're good and healthy. Their roots have gone down, and our roots are go down into Christ so that our lives will be healthy. We have an amazing gospel, do we not? Amazing gospel. We were lost, but Jesus found us. Yeah, anybody agree with that? that <laughs> God freely forgives us for Jesus' sake as we put our faith and trust in him. And you know, we must never forget who we were or where we were and who we now are through God's grace. I've got a quote here from Martin Luther. I think we may have his picture there. Yes, that's Martin Luther lived in the, um, um, well, 15th, 16th centuries. He said, see that you do not forget what you were before, lest you take for granted the grace and mercy you received from God and forget to express your gratitude each day. Good quote, isn't it? Remembrance of what we were and what we now are in Christ should generate, develop, encourage a spirit of thankfulness within us. As I was preparing for this talk, Vicky Kanda lent me a book. Um, it's called Thanking God. It's by Archie Kendall, who was for 25 years the minister of Westminster Chapel in, uh, in central London. And uh, I've enjoyed reading it. I benefited from reading it. And he says that his subtitle that sums up really what he's saying could be expressed in just uh, four words. Don't forget to remember. Don't forget to remember. So that's what I'm putting before you this morning. As a spur to our thankfulness, don't forget to remember where you've come from, what you are now in Christ, and to rejoice and be thankful because of all of that. So Christians should be thankful people. Uh, Paul highlights the quality of thankfulness, well, four times even in the few verses we read just there. Overflowing with thankfulness. Be thankful, he said, giving thanks to God. The Greek noun is eucharistia, um, which means thank, thanks, thankfulness. So, and um, some parts of the church, of course, they describe the communion service as the Eucharist. It's just a transliteration of the, of the Greek word. Not just simply thankfulness, but here it says overflowing with thankfulness. A heart so full of thankfulness that it overflows and is evident to others, even to the judge and jury in court, should you be uh, brought before them. You know, thankfulness can be contagious. In the climate of thanksgiving, 
Grumbling and moaning can barely exist. And if you think carefully about the few verses we read, there's a note there that giving thanks to God springs out of um, letting the word of Christ dwell richly in our hearts. And where worship is just a natural expression of what's in our hearts. As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So thankfulness for the Christian isn't a sort of add-on thing. It's something that is an outward expression of an inner reality in our hearts. Years ago, an old, an old saint, an old writer, uh, asked the question, who would you describe as the greatest saint in the world? I wonder what you would say to that. Well, he's not naming names here, but you'll get the gist when I read what he said. He said, would you know who is the greatest saint in the world? It's not the one who prays or fasts most or who loves most, but the one who's always thankful to God, who receives everything as an instance of God's goodness and has a heart ready to praise God for it. Challenging words. I don't know whether you agree with this comment, but it, it's a thought-provoking one and, and a good one, I believe. So what are we to be thankful for? Well, there's no time to develop these points very much this morning, but for, of course, for all God's mercy and goodness to us. We've sung about that, and that's lovely. We've been able to give voice to that this morning. As we remind ourselves of the sheer Undeserved wonder of God's grace. You know, the Christian gospel is wonderfully life-transforming, isn't it? We're forgiven. We have the Holy Spirit indwelling us. We have God's daily help. And we live with an eternal hope because death is a defeated foe. So we thank God, too, for our life together in the church. We've reflected on that this morning and... Uh, I won't go into the detail, but it's all been put before us. You know, it's a wonderful reality to be part of God's family, isn't it? Yeah. It really is. And uh, we need to um, really praise God and, and give him thanks that we're part of a fellowship where he's clearly at work at this time, and I rejoice in that. Of course, another thing to be thankful for is the love of family and friends and I have so many reasons to be thankful for, for family. And um, um, in a difficult day, yesterday, uh, several of my family phoned me and uh, we had quite extended chats, and, and that was lovely. Uh, but friends too, and uh, I'm sure you've got supportive friends, friends that know you pretty well and are there for you when, when the chips are down. Um, let's not be slow to thank people for their kindness to us. So easy to take things for granted. And uh, um, as I've got older, I try very hard not to do that, but to express thanks for small things as well as for bigger things. And then, of course, uh, thinking more widely, we can give thanks for the wonder of the natural world that God has created. One thing I really enjoyed from Andy's Camino um, videos has been just the way he's taken delight in the natural world that he's been walking through. And uh, I've never walked that far in my life, probably never will, but um, I do know that as you walk through the countryside, you see more, you perceive more. Um, and uh, I've always find it refreshing and upbuilding to do just that. And Andy's clearly benefiting from that in his, oh, it's only 24 kilometers today kind of, kind of talk. It's so only 24 kilometers. Well, yes. But uh, it's been really encouraging. And we can turn that into, into thanksgiving and praise to God. For the wonder of the world, I know that we have damaged it as the human race, 
But it's still a wonderful world in so many world ways, isn't it? I was reading something just a week or two back that Steve Finnamore has recently said, and Steve Finnamore is the new Baptist Union president, and he said, we need to be intentional about expressing gratitude. I think that's true. I think that's true. Not in some false sort of bonhomie sort of way, but in genuine thanks to friends, to family, to all that we have in our life together in the church, we need to be intentional about expressing gratitude. Well, I'm keeping an eye on the clock, which is going by too quickly. I wanted to say something about cultivating thankfulness. And a little aside, in a way, which I found rather interesting. Did you know that uh, studies at the Mayo Clinic in the United States, a um, well-known institution, have shown that being a thankful person has physical, physical benefits. This is generally across the board. It, it um, improves sleep patterns. It lowers blood pressure. It decreases anxiety and, dep and, uh, and depression. Apparently, all that flows from being a thankful person. Isn't that amazing? I'd never thought of that before. I think I should try a bit harder now because it's, uh, there are real benefits there, you see. Incidentally, we will all have been aware of the, uh, the death on a Greek island of the writer, the doctor, TV personality, Michael Mosley, a sad death just uh, quite recently. In one of the last articles that he wrote, he wrote about singing and how it's been shown at a university in Finland, I think it was, that singing helps grow, grow new brain cells in stroke patients. Amazing. Singing therapy over a period of time. And new brain cells grow. That's remarkable. I began to think, well, as a Christian, being thankful, singing God's praises together with others in the fellowship of his people ought to be the most uplifting and physically uh, um, uh, encouraging thing that we can, one of them that we can do. And um, again, we sometimes take that for granted, but it is a very special privilege we have as God's people to be able to sing his praises. Well, those are just asides, but um, I thought you might find them interesting. You know, our thankfulness honors God and his work in our lives. Our thankfulness encourages others. It's um, become a habit uh, these days on, on the buses, I notice. And I do have a bus pass, so I don't pay anything. But as you get off the bus, everybody says, um, thank you, driver. Thank you, driver. Never used to be the case, but it is now. I think it's a nice little habit, and I, so I've fallen into it. And sometimes you say thank you to somebody, and they're quite taken aback. And it almost makes their day that somebody has noticed them and said thank you for what they've done. And um, I wonder if we say thank you often enough to our nearest and dearest. I'm asking you the question, uh, not to give a public answer, but to think that through. Husbands, wives, family members. How often do you express your thanksgiving for all that they are and all that they do? It's good to keep account of uh, God's blessings and uh, to record answers to prayer. Um, some people keep a prayer diary. I... I do, but intermittently, I have to say. I have phases where I do it every day, and then something happens, and the mood gets broken, and then it's weeks before I get back to it. But it's a helpful exercise. Then you thumb back over the pages, and you see the things that God has done and the answers that he's granted. Writing stuff down is a good reminder. And... Um, our prayer diaries ought to have many words of thanks in them. 
Maybe it would be a good thing to spend a day just thanking God for things. It's right that we should ask him for things, um, but if we just ask and never thank, we've got the balance wrong somewhere. So why don't you try uh, a day of thanksgiving without asking God for anything new? It may be a little exercise that you would find helpful. Good corrective, really. You know the old hymn says, count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. You know, we do forget, and we mustn't forget. Don't forget to remember. It's so good to be thankful for what we have rather than upset about the things that we don't have or think we deserve to have. Paul wrote to the Philippians, I've learned to be content. Whatever the circumstances, I know what it is to be in need and what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Maybe that's something that only develops with, uh, with uh, time, um, but a contented person, I'm sure, will be a thankful person. We should try and cultivate Christian contentment. So you may actually be in quite a tough situation today. Difficulties keep on coming, threaten to overwhelm you. And you say, well, it's okay for many, but what have I got to be thankful for? Well, for a start, you can thank God that he hasn't forsaken you, that his mercies extend to you each and every day. We sang that lovely song just now with the line, Your mercy never fails me. In the darkest night, you are close like no other. I wonder if that's your testimony. Sometimes I find myself singing words, and I think, is this really true for me? If it's not, then I turn it into a prayer. Lord, please make that true for me in my life, that in the dark days I would know, or the dark nights, I would know the closeness of God. I have had that experience in uh, recent months. I'm grateful for it. Um, so that's something to be thankful for even if you can't think of many other things. Maybe ask God to awaken your thoughts, to remind you of things that um, will turn you into thanking God. We can thank God for those who serve us and uh, find reasons to be thankful each and every day, I'm sure. Um, being thankful focuses our minds on God and uh, helps to build our faith in God. And uh, we need to make, you'll recall again that some weeks back, Andy spoke on the theme of gratitude um, as the last of the spiritual discipline series. Do you remember that? And uh, I'm in a similar territory just in now in, in, in the comments I'm making. So this is a day of thanksgiving, day to recall and day for, to reflect. Thanksgiving can be personal, it can be very personal. It can be corporate, and uh, in a way, this is a corporate day of thanksgiving as we praise God for his mercies to us as a church. And we've got an opportunity today to, to give money as a tangible expression uh, of our gratitude to God for uh, the church, its life, and its ministry. It's not the only way, but it's a tangible way and, and a, a right way. And um, so it's appropriate that we do have this opportunity today to express our thanksgiving in this way. King David, you know, had prayed a remarkable prayer, a um, prayer of thanksgiving for the gifts of the people that enabled the temple to be rebuilt in Jerusalem in the time of his son Solomon. And this was part of his prayer. He said, praise be to you, O Lord, God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting, 
Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hand are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. These are the words of Scripture. Let's bow together, shall we, in a moment of quiet. Just reflecting on all that's been reviewed before us today. Examining our own hearts. Are we truly thankful people? And then guiding us as we make an offering shortly. Father, we thank you today for the reminders of your many blessings in our life together. We acknowledge your goodness and mercy as we prepare to make an offering of money as an expression of our thankfulness to you. Lord, help us to do so with joyful spirits, hearts full of gratitude. We offer ourselves to you again this morning, our time our talents, as well as our resources. Lord, may every part of our lives demonstrate that Jesus Christ is indeed Lord. We pray in his mighty and precious name. Amen. Thanks, Alan. Very helpful word. A very helpful word. And um, I would also encourage you to read Thanking God um, by Artie Kendall. It was a certainly a mind changer for me. <coughs> so um, as Alan has already um, mentioned, we are going to take an offering up um, th- during the next two songs. Um, there will be buckets being passed around. Um, if you usually give electronically, um, there will be a QR code um, that comes up on screen. Um, and there's also, I believe, <laughs> I believe that, um, oh yeah, sorry, I forgot, you have to have the song words. Um, <laughs> Um, it will come up at the end of the service so that you can give electronically and um, also um, you can give in the usual way through the bank details Um, but can you please make sure that you put thank offering um, so that we know what it's for and this is to take up an offering to be used in the year ahead um, for what God is going to do Um, so um, yeah we just um, want to celebrate and show our gratitude for what God has done and to offer him all that we have um, and all that we are and we trust him for the year ahead. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to pass over to Matt.
Let's give thanks. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this offering, this thank offering. Lord, we give back what you first gave us. And Lord, we pray that you would bless this offering and any offering that comes in um, today, tomorrow, in the next week, Lord, that you would bless it for your work, Lord, that you would lead us where we need to go where your heart is, where your spirit is moving. Thank you, Lord, that we have so much to be thankful for. As we've been reminded by Alan, and Lord, even in those darkest hours, we give thanks for your faithfulness. As you never leave us, you never forsake us. You hold us in your hand. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's close with our prayer, our usual prayer. Father God, as you lead us out onto our front lines, help us to love you, each other, and our communities. Release the gifts you've given us and invite others to meet with Jesus. Amen. I'd just like to invite you to stay around. Um, Even if you've forgotten to bring food, God always provides. Um, So please do join us for our fellowship lunch. Um, I also just wanted to say um, Michael um, is okay. He's gone home. He's had a little turn. So uh, he's gone. His daughter's going to look after him at home. Um, But keep him in your prayers, please. Um, And um, yeah, thank you for, um, for being such a wonderful church family.